<laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the television writing and production info session as part of our Discovered and Chapman, excuse me, Discovered Chapman events. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Jessica Houston. I am the admissions coordinator at Dodge College, and I will be your moderator for this evening. Before we get started, I wanted to briefly talk about our Zoom guidelines for today. Please make sure you are muted unless you are called on to unmute yourself. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat. We do have staff prepared with us today to answer your questions there. We will also have the opportunity to answer your questions during our Q&A portion of today's event. So without further ado, to get things started, I'll go ahead and pass things off to our faculty member, James Gardner. Hey, everybody. A lot of you out there. It's very, very happy to see all your shining, lovely faces. Uh, James Gardner, I'm Director of Television Studies. We have uh, our full-time faculty with us today. Uh, what we're going to do quickly is to give a, a brief overview of everybody's professional credits and what classes they teach. Uh, and let's start out with, on my screen, to my right, Jill Condon. Hi, you guys. Oh. Phew, for a second I thought I was on mute. Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, we're really excited to answer all your questions today. James? Oh, Jill, why don't you tell us a little about yourself and what classes you teach? Oh, I, wouldn't sorry. Have, I wouldn't have started with you if it was gonna be an epic. If you knew I was gonna screw up so bad. I thought we were doing names and then we were doing what we are. Sorry, you guys. We're, this is kind of how we roll. We're very fun and we banter back and forth. Um, I teach undergrads, usually uh, a class that's number 127 or 327, and I teach grads as well. And it's sort of your basic comedy writing classes where one is the first one you take where you come in as freshmen um, and you learn all the basics of script. And then 327 is a level up from that, and that's where you guys actually get to write a script. Um, and it's not scary because we teach you little by little how to do it. So if you don't, some of you guys come in having written full scripts and, and you guys wanna pitch me your one hours that you've got you know, six episodes of already, and some of you are like, wait, where's the fade in go? So we're good, we got you guys covered um, and, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Well, in terms of credits, a little show called Friends. That's Jill Condon, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and now, it's one that you've never heard of also. <laughs> next to Jill Condon on my screen is a man who's starring as Al Pacino in a movie. You can see the, the uh, likeness there. He normally doesn't have the facial hair. That's Professor William Rosenthal. Hi, everybody. Uh, you can uh, call me Bill or Bill Rosenthal. Um, hi, welcome. We're very happy to see all of you. Um, I wrote and uh, produced series for a long time. Uh, it's a couple that you might have heard of. One was Sabrina um, from your childhood. Another a little bit more of an adult show was Nurse Jackie and a lot of stuff in between. Um, the classes I teach uh, are the intro classes that Jill was just talking about, the intro writing classes. We also have these intermediate classes uh, where everybody writes as if they are on a series. Everybody in the class is gonna write, writes the same show. Um, and we, we recreate the writer's room. And uh, we do, our advanced writing classes are writing original material. And we choose some of those scripts and we make them uh, during interterm. And additionally, we do short form, which are short episodic projects that students write and then make. Um, in addition to the writing, uh, our tracks also have production in them. And the whole idea of our program is to combine uh, writing and production with this idea that uh, to be a good writer, you really need to know something about production, and to know about production, you need to know about writing, um, and kind of everything in between, as you're going to hear about. Um, so anyway, welcome. We're very happy to see all of you. Bill Rosenthal, normally he demands a standing ovation, but since we're on Zoom, <laughs> we can just show our, our jazz hands. Uh, next to Bill is the man we like to refer to, Professor Steve Herson, the man who ruined television. Take it away, Steve. 
and they I, and they um, sent me to a desert island never to come back. Um, yes, I was one of the creators and the original director of Entertainment Tonight, which some people certainly say ruined television news. Uh, whether it ruined TV or not, I don't know. My other big credit later uh, is another show you may be familiar with, uh, America's Funniest Home Videos. So as you can see, I'm not the uh, person who comes from narrative scripted form. I come from multi-camera studio live and live event TV. I've done sports, I've done award shows, I've done kid shows, I've done concerts. I've done everything but multiple camera comedy because my friend Mort would never hire me. Um, because I didn't know him then. Um, he'd hire me now, but we don't. Okay, anyway, so I teach studio television, hands on studio television, where when you, and this is a basic course that you take, that you all would take. Uh, James Gardner also teaches the course, and uh, you uh, run camera, you do the audio, you do the switching, you do the graphics, and you produce and direct your own short little projects. Uh, and then I also teach an advanced version of that. Uh, where we do more of a variety show, and um, that's, uh, they're a lot of fun, they're very popular, you learn a ton real quick, and you learn the pressures in a good way of being in a TV studio and, and making the day, meaning get your show done in time uh, before uh, the lights go out, sort of thing. So uh, welcome, happy to see all of you. Thank you, Steve Herson. Uh he makes the lights go on. That's Charlie Myers, our utility player. Lighting, directing, gripping, Charles Myers. Production. Yes, uh, I'm the production guy, everybody. Hello, welcome. And I've got about 35 or 50 credits on different pictures, uh, including a short-lived television show. Um, I've done installations at the Museum of Modern Art. I've done all kinds of production things. And more or less, I can work kind of any position on the set, whether it's camera, lighting, sound. Uh, my last three credits were production manager, first AD, and production designer. So, I mean, there you go. Um, also did theme parks for about 10 years, built theme park attractions all over the world. You've probably been on some of the things I've put up. But uh, yeah, now I'm a very proud member of Team TWP, and uh, hopefully I'll be one of the people helping you make your pilots in just a few years, which I'm sure Avery could speak about. But that's something that Bill and I do is that we try to get your pilots made uh, when you get up to your senior year. So hopefully we'll be running into each other again on, on you know, making your dreams come true. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie Myers. Up next, he's a writer. He's an executive producer. He's a showrunner. He's a film director. Yes, that's our favorite, Mort Nathan. <laughs> Hi, hi everyone. Um, it's very nice to see you all here. I look forward to hopefully sooner rather than later seeing everybody in person and working with all of you in person. Um, I started out in film school. I went to NYU and when I got out here I accidentally got a very good job on a TV show called The Golden Girls and I wrote that to begin with and then had a long career in half hour TV, did a worked at Paramount when they were doing a lot of shows that became iconic later, like Frasier, Wings, Cheers. Uh, and I've worked in movies as a script doctor. I've written and directed a couple of films. And I teach writing for TV. And I do introductory classes and more advanced classes on a graduate level. And sometimes uh, production classes where we uh, do short uh, stories, uh, short webisodes that end up being web series. And what we all try and stress here is how to become good storytellers. And we work on character and try to get a level of professionalism that will prepare you to work in the real world. Thank you, Mort Nathan. Now we have cameras, we have uh, beautiful shots, we have beautiful scenery, we have beautiful words, we have beautiful lighting, but what do you need? You need actors, actors, and more actors. Here's where Nancy Ruby comes in. Nancy Carol Ruby, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Hello. 
I am. Hello, I'm Nancy Carol Ruby. I have an MFA from DePaul University, and I've been teaching the craft of acting for over 20 years and directing uh, for easily half of that. I've served as an agent recommended coach. I've wrangled on countless sets, and I, I now have the joy of watching students on screens, large and small, on stages from stand up to Broadway. If you're going to watch the Tonys this year, I have a former student up for a Tony uh, uh, from Jagged Little Pill. Uh, so I really get jazzed about watching uh, students have those aha moments and uh, find the value in their own story and their piece and how they invest in the team sport of uh, visual storytelling. My classes that I teach undergraduates, I have the directing two class and then uh, for the graduate students is the actor producer workshop. That's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's Nancy Carol Ruby. The next two women are frozen, Patty Martinez and Avery. Uh, they're helping out Jessica today, and they'll be uh, helping take your questions and getting answers for you. Uh, Avery is in uh, the chat room saying hello. I urge everyone to turn the chat feature on so you can get these extra special little messages. Bill, you touched on this, Bill Rosenthal, TWP, Television Writing and Production. That's the degree. Why are those three letters important, William? Why are those? Well, yeah. T, I mean, we need them. There are three of the 20s. No, um, they're important because uh, our program stresses writing and production in television. We are not the, we're not purely production. We're not purely television or screenwriting. We are a combination of all of this. And our courses work in tandem with one another to give you uh, a really strong foundation um, as, you, as you go from being a freshman through being a senior. Um, we've seen incredible success with our students leaving our program and going off and uh and joining the workforce at least before covid has made things a little bit tougher but um when you leave our program we try to look at this as to where do we want you to be at the end of your four years and we want you to have a well-rounded education which you get through the chapman requirements that you have to do but we also want you to have a well-rounded education when it comes to writing and also production. The production courses are everything from cameras to sound to lighting. And the writing courses, uh, we do comedy, we do drama. Um, we have divided our classes up. Uh, so starting as a freshman, the first class you'll do will either be a foundation in comedy or a foundation in drama the following semester. You'll flip that. You'll go on uh, after that and do uh, Comedy, comedy classes, drama classes, all the way until you're ready to write original material. So Steve has just put up our core requirements. Uh, Professor Herson, anything yeah, you Bill was to alluding about? to this. Um, are you, you're, you're seeing the full page version of this, not, uh, it's, it's beautiful. Um, so our core requirements, everyone takes these, these 10, 12 classes, whatever it is, as you can see, there's studio TV, there's some basic uh, craft classes, editing, audio, cine. Uh, there's a basic directing class, there's a history class. There's an overview of TV and how the actual world of television, whether it's network television or streaming television works. And then there's uh, two writing classes. There's a basic class where you shoot short projects where you produce, write, and, and shoot and edit your own little projects. Uh, and then there's an overview of the industry and there's an advanced directing course that are all required uh, of you. Um, someone asked, is there, uh, in the chat, asked if there's producing and directing cl classes, the answer is yes. Um, and if you look at the next uh, four classes here, you'll notice that there are, there are four, um, there are two writing classes and two production classes, all advanced classes. So if you're more into, into, into producing, you could take the multicam or narrative TV workshop, which are more producing and directing classes. If you're more a 
of a writer, you could take a seminar in writing comedy or seminar in writing drama, or you can mix and match. And you, despite only requiring two, you could take all four of them and the other two could become your electives. So in a sense, there's a, there's a, a writing path to take or more of a production path to take. Then as you go down to your junior year, senior year, you take a pre-production class, which is exactly up Charlie's. Charlie referred to production management and being a unit production manager in AD. This is how scripts are broken down and organized and shot. Uh, at that point, you can also take a course called writing a pilot, where you write your original material. Eventually that pilot is shot and we pre-produce that actual script and then we shoot it in pilot production. Uh, so that, that, and there's different ways these courses work together, but you take two out of these four. A lot of people take three out of the four and use one of them as an elective. They write the pilot, they prep it, and then they shoot it. Uh, our capstone course is called Short Form One and Two, where you write and produce a short, uh, we used to call webisodes, but I believe they're five to eight minute uh, uh, films. Uh, TV shows and um, and as a team you put those together whether you're producer director cinematographer editor uh, you can do all the jobs or, or um, bring on crew people from outside so there are opportunities for students to go on weekend shoots who may not even be in the class to start getting exp experience on set um, and then there we got a ton of electives this is another production management class. You can take production design, reality TV, editing two, uh, feature writing for non-screen majors. There's advanced audio, cine. There's a sketch comedy class. There's film script analysis classes. There's editing the series, which is our, our pilots. There's various other um, uh, uh, um, electives. They're not all offered every semester. And anytime you get an internship, and we can talk a little bit more about internships later, that also is a possible electives, elective for you. So the total credits you would need to graduate is, is 60 credits. That's 20 courses. That's half, excuse me, half of your entire Chapman load. So in addition to that, you might have a minor or something called a cluster. You, you will be required actually to have a minor or a cluster. And that is something else that you don't have to worry about right now, but you will take on by the end of your sophomore year. Great, Steve. Thanks. The minor a could be a Dodge minor or it could be something totally outside Dodge, like sociology, psychology, women's studies, uh, whatever. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a quick overview. We, 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 we are here with you all the way, uh, advising you through this, and you will quickly get the hang of uh, how, to, how to make your journey through uh, Chaplin University and through the uh, School of Dodge. Uh, if Mort and Nancy, if you guys could tag team, Mort, why mm -hmm. do writers have to learn about directing actors? And, and, and Nancy, why do actors and directors have to learn about writing? Go ahead, Nancy, you start. Okay, so if you want to be a writer or a director or a producer, you should have a basic understanding of the craft of acting because television and visual story is an ensemble sport. We make each other better. So a writer who is well versed in improvisation, who can give and take in the moment, can translate those skills to the page with confidence, writing authentic dialogue and textured characters. And a writer brave enough to be vulnerable in an acting class just might allow the characters they create to dive into emotional depths that are going to resonate with all of us. Now, a director who doesn't understand the craft of acting is likely to speak the language of emotion to an actor. And you're going to get exactly what you asked for. One note, we call it an emotional wash. But a director who is fluent in actionable language, and that's the language of the craft of acting, that director understands that emotion is a byproduct of action. So is emotion important in human storytelling? Absolutely, but we don't wake up in the morning and think, oh, today I'm gonna be sad, or today I'm gonna be happy or angry or whatever. No, we go about our day action to action, and when obstacles arise and conflicts ensue, discoveries are made, emotions bubble up. They're byproducts 
of action, right? So in the TW Dragon class, you're going to dive into the craft of acting through units and improvisation, significant gesture, script analysis, repetition of sensory elements that are required on a set, and that's just the first five weeks. <laughs> and then you apply what you've learned to a script as an actor while also assistant directing on another script. And then finally, you take the director's chair and you use all the scaffolded skills you've learned from all your classes and your set experiences to date. You clearly state your vision, you speak actionable language, and you work with your team to shoot your project, to bring your vision to fruition. So uh, you're now ready to be a valued member of, of a team, what, no matter what your craft is. So I'll toss that back to Mort. Okay. You know, it's funny when I wanted, to, when I started writing professionally, I thought I could just stay in my room and slip pages under a door and that's all I would do. And actors will find you, directors will find you, production people will find you. You have to learn the language of how to communicate with everybody, regardless of what discipline you end up in. It doesn't make any difference if you end up a writer, a director, an editor, a producer, a cinematographer, a production designer. The more you know about all of the craft, the better you are at all of it. Because as a writer, which I've done most of my career and done other things as a producer, as a director involved in post-production, you have to be able to clearly communicate what your ideas are and you have to understand the characters that are in the story that you're telling. And it doesn't matter if you're the production designer, the cinematographer, or the writer, the writer creates, the others interpret that vision. So it all overlaps and it's critically important. And that's what our, our program does is we teach you a lot about a lot of things and you immerse yourself into it and it makes you better prepared to go out into the world and to continue to explore what it is you want to do and what you want to try and make your profession. And most of you don't know, and there's not a thing wrong with that. And there's the sense of discovery of you never knew you were good with actors because you did not know how to communicate. You thought you wanted to write, but then as you get into this, you realize you might be more concerned with the visual. Or you might be more interested in post-production, but it's all valuable. And that's why the language of writing and directing and acting and all the other parts of the craft that come together are all pieces that we all stress here as part of the program. Can I add one thing to that? Um, which is what makes our program unique is that we do both the writing and the production. What we've seen happen with our students is over the four years, our students really discover where their passions are. And um, so you might come in thinking you want to do one thing and you discover what you really enjoy is something a little different. Um, and that's something that when you're looking at programs, be very aware of because you don't, you know, with this, I don't mean this in the sense a little patronizing, it's the last thing I mean to be, but you don't want to end up in a program where you're stuck uh, with only having the choice of what you think you want to do when you start as a freshman. You want to look for programs that are going to give you the opportunity to try a lot of different things, to really see what it is that you love doing. And, and kind of the best part of this program for us as instructors is we get to watch students and that discovery process. Thank you, Bill. Uh, our time is running short. We're, we're trying to uh, give you guys a lot of time for uh, questions uh, that we will attempt to answer. Um, office hours if we were there in person there would be a line of people waiting to get in to see bill rosenthal now i think it's because he gives out candy every time we go into his office and but, money and money as well but we are available we are available to you i know steve is spending his life on zoom talking with students all the time um office hours are important take advantage of those office hours um Jill, why don't you talk about the coordinator? What does a coordinator do? 
unmute her mic for starters. Sorry about that. And I made a joke. I was like, I coordinate you guys. And now it's just late and not good. Um, <laughs> no, guys, I'm sort of here for what you need. Um, you know, I get endless emails about this class, that class. How do I enroll? It's not letting me enroll. All the stuff that I think in other schools you kind of are alone in your dorm room dealing with. We have somebody who's dedicated uh, in the department, and that's me, to help you guys out with whatever comes up. Um, it's a, it can be a little tricky because sometimes we have you guys do a cluster or a minor or a second major, and that can add a fairly decent amount of credits. So you want to work it very carefully to make sure you graduate on time, and it can get confusing. And so it's hard when there's just like a main office person that you're calling going, I don't know what to do with my, my credits, I'm not sure. And so between the coordinator, which is me, and Professor Herson, who is the king of all advisors, we make sure that you guys know what you're doing and that you're not freaking out. And I have come to realize, especially with you guys when you're first getting here, it's a really big deal. Like we're really helpful to you. So it's kind of nice that you guys have somebody, you know, the school wants you guys to feel uh, like you've got somebody on your team to make sure nothing's falling through the cracks and you're covered wherever you need to be covered. We're, you know, I like to say, relax, you guys, we're TWP, we've got you. It's okay, you've got your people, you've got your crew and that's us. Um, so it's nice. Charlie, can you speak a little bit about uh, being on set and crewing on set in this time of COVID? It's, it's different. <laughs> like we have all the zones and stuff like that. And um, the crews are smaller and we're starting to see, I'm starting to see some weird things. I just saw a commercial get shot last week where the director was in another state. And I thought that was, that was different. So um, the things are changing in production. But, um, you know, one thing about, like, if I can go back to like the writing and production, how it's married together, I remember James saying one time, like, oh, hey, you know, when you write down the sentence, the cavalry charges over the hill, or let's say like uh, 10,000 soldiers hit the beach in Normandy, when you write that down, that's a, that's a million bucks for that sentence, and days and days and days, and wardrobe, and, you know, first aid, and permits, and stuff like that. Part of my job is to help teach you how to write things that actually get made and can get made or scripts that can be sold and are producible because being a writer is great, but I want to see you be a produced writer. And that's where we'll work with you and say, okay, hey, look, let's just shoot it all handheld, quick cutting of like three soldiers, then five soldiers and two soldiers uh, hitting the beat. And if we cover it like that, then it becomes manageable. And you can actually, then we'll fill it all in with like the, the sound design at the end to make it sound like 10,000 soldiers. Like those are the kinds of things that uh, hopefully uh, I'll be able to teach you so that you get your pictures actually produced and made and of a high quality. But uh, the production is an adventure nowadays. Thanks, Charlie. Um, uh, most of you guys are, um, uh, uh, would be incoming freshmen. There are some transfer people. Um, we can deal with those um, as a separate group. Um, we didn't talk about internships, but as incoming freshmen, you don't really have to worry about internships. What I do want to say before we turn it over to uh, Jessica is that uh, our sole job, this faculty here, is to help you make your dreams come true. We've all, all of us have had uh, our professional careers and our, and our career continues. So in a sense, we've achieved our dream. But this school is about us helping you make your dreams come true. And please take advantage of us we are here to help you. We are here for you. And Jessica, with that, uh, we'll give it back to you uh, for questions, okay? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so we do have some questions in the chat that I wanted to ask you all. Um, so we have a question from uh, Tiran. I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Um, what skills are you looking for in a student applying to the TWP program with no onset experience? William. Will you answer? Doesn't, yeah, doesn't matter. We're, you're, you're coming to school to get on set experience. So, so don't, that, we, we don't expect you guys to come with 
a specific experience like that. That's why you, you come to college. Yeah, literally, like my job will be to teach you how to do all these different jobs. And, 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 there's, and they're all super fun, I, I think. We want people to come who are passionate about learning about how to be good storytellers. If you watch Netflix a lot, if you watch TV in the middle of the night and obsess about stories and streaming, that's great. That's the kind of stuff we want to get into. And we will get into the specifics of how to create your vision, but we want enthusiasm and passion. That's what we're concerned with. If you are worried about the application, the creative resume, and you're thinking we're looking for films and onset experience, that isn't the case. Uh, if you worked on your high school yearbook, you worked on a student play, you wrote poetry, you, you did a little bit of um, um, reporting for your, you know, um, we're just looking for some creative experiences. Obviously, writing is good, telling stories is good, but uh, anything you submit, uh, we we appreciate and we think it's background for moving on into our moving off up into our program so don't don't worry about that stuff too much thank you steve awesome so there's a question from danny james i know you mentioned like transferring was a different conversation but danny is a transfer student and they asked i have a, or they said i have another semester between now and fall is there a list of labs i can take that qualify in place of chapman's program uh, it's hard to do things in place of Chaplin's program. Some courses will be accepted. Steve's a master at uh, looking at a, a transcript and seeing how we could fit in your experience. But really, you're coming here to learn the Chaplin way. You're, you're coming here to learn uh, our process, which will lead to great product. So um, I don't think you should think about doing stuff instead of stuff. You come here and you learn our way of doing things. And I would simply add, um, there may be a few, but get your GEs out of the way. Those are the, those are the um, courses you can take somewhere else and in a sense check the boxes off here at Chapman and then dive into our major as quickly as you can and not have to worry about you know, your social science you know, GE and your writing GE and, and those sort of things. Um, so uh, just, you know, get those out of the way. Thanks, Steve. No, thank you. We have a few questions regarding double majoring. Um, just so all the prospective students know, there is like a Dodge student portal for current students where there's like a document. So once you are a student, you'll be able to see a breakdown of what majors uh, can cross over, what uh, majors can't necessarily do so because there may be some some uh, double dipping in classes or maybe too much production going on and you can't do another program at the same time. But do uh, the faculty here, do you guys happen to um, know of current students that have double majored in any other programs with TWP? Uh, double major is 154 credits. It, you're biting a, a very large chunk of the apple. It's difficult. We do have people who uh, double major in business. We do have people who double major in PR and ad. Um, you guys who do most of the advising, uh, what, what do you say when someone says to you, I want a double major? Be ready to work really hard. If you think you can, you know, if you think you, you want to do that, go for it. Um, some of the majors that you might think you um, are interested in, you'll find you'll, particularly if it's related to writing and producing, we may provide for you. So, so get here. You don't have to decide on that till you don't have to decide till your sophomore year, even the end of your sophomore year. Get here, get a feel for what the place has to offer, and, and then we'd be glad, as, as James said, our doors are open. We'd be glad to talk to you about it. Uh, you know, a broadcast journalist often double majors in poli sci. Uh, I don't think necessarily our writing majors have to uh, double major in creative writing because they do plenty of creative writing here at Dodge. So um, we, we don't discourage it by any means, but it's, it's a lot to, as James says, it's a, it's a lot. We want you to have a little bit of fun, you know? <laughs> and you have your minors and, and, and or your clusters. And we try to encourage you to do, to do those over in the main part of campus to augment what you're learning at Dodge. 
So, you know, if you're interested in being a writer, we want you to, you know, if you take a history minor or an English minor or political science minor, all these are very good. They're very psychology. This stuff is very good for you to augment what's happening at Dodge. It will help you in, in all sorts of ways. Thanks, Joe. So we've had some questions regarding uh, post-grad. So can you guys talk about what students in TWP leave with, what kind of work they leave with, and then also what uh, careers do they typically go into after they graduate? Um, well, TWP's got a really good internship program, first of all. Um, it's run by Joe Rosenberg, who used to run Creative Artists, and he represented Ridley Scott, David Fincher, Michael Bay, and he knows everybody. So we put people in studios and networks and streaming services, major independent production companies that do TV, film, and gaming. And also we have connections now with post-production houses and equipment houses. So you're going to get exposed to a lot of different arenas and everyone's going to have a portfolio. Everyone is going to have different pieces that are, are strong for them. There's going to be short films. There are going to be pilots. There are going to be examples of existing scripts. So depending upon what your interest is and depending upon what your strength is, you'll have pieces of material that illustrate your strengths that you can show people. So no one leaves here to my knowledge. I mean, it has happened that people have moved up the ranks very quickly as writers and directors, but people start in introductory arenas. You know, they start as assistants, as writers assistants, editorial assistants, and they end up creating movies and writing TV shows and doing very well. And people like our students, people like our interns, Steve Herson and I were at an unrelated event a few weeks ago for a different university. And there was someone there from Steven Spielberg's company at Amblin. And you remember, Steve, all they said is, we like chat. Yeah. That's who we like to hire. You know, and, and it was really interesting. It was totally unsolicited and it had nothing to do with our university. And it just shows that we have a rep in the community that people really respond to our students and what they do. We can't guarantee you a job, but we can give you a skill set to prepare you for people to, when you get that moment, when people want to know what you think or want to read your stuff, that you're ready on a professional level. Two quick stories, um, and if, if you guys would um, email me, uh, jgardner at chapman.edu. Uh, this week, Tuesday night, 7 p.m., Gus Hoffman is coming to speak. Gus is a head of comedy development at Warner Brothers. He uh, got a, uh, an internship at Warner Brothers. They asked him back for a second semester. Before the second semester was over, he was hired uh, by the comedy development folks, and within three years, He's running comedy development. Similarly, Jeff Topolsky started as a PA on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, got hired to be a writer's room assistant, got hired to be script coordinator, and uh, then he wrote his first script, which was filmed last year, and now he's on staff. This is the way it works. A well-placed internship that leads to a job. And it happens, it happens for more than a, a, a handful of people. But, so if you want to come and hear Gus talk, just shoot me an, an email and I'll, I'll send a Zoom link out to you. It's worthwhile to hear him speak. Awesome. Okay, our next question is from Matthew. What does Dodge look like right now in distance learning? Are there any in-person classes and how do the production classes work? It looks like this. This is, <laughs> you're experiencing it right now. We also have a version of classes called High Flex, um, in which uh, students who choose to come to class come to class, and the ones who choose to stay home uh, participate via Zoom. It's a uh, it's a mixed mixed metaphor of uh, of, of learning. Um, Charlie, have you experienced that? Well, yes. Um, we can actually speak to it, and boy, Avery could as well, and as well as Bill. Um, I am teaching a production class right now. Uh, we are making things in the, the context of the class. And then for our pilot prep class, I'm just starting to organize these workshops that will take place outdoors, uh, social distance, masks. Uh, I actually am a 
certified COVID compliance officer. And so um, we'll be doing like, these workshops on camera. We'll be doing one on lighting and stuff like that. So we are still integrating it and we are still planning to shoot our pilot this January, but we're following the best practices from all the different unions as well as the college rules. And so, uh, it, which are strict, but we're following them and we're gonna continue shooting. We're, we're still in production, man, we're TWP. Thanks, Charlie. Okay, uh, I see we have a question about when admissions decisions will be released uh, if you applied early action. Uh, so those will be released in December, by the way, just to answer that. Um, Danny asked, where can you get COVID compliance certifications? Charlie, that's a uh, question there's, for you. Yeah, there's a few of them, and it, it, there's a few of them, but if you're serious about it, take the ones that are that are sanctioned by a SAG, would be my advice. They are a little bit more money, but um, there's some that are as little as 50 bucks, and you, and you actually do get certified, and they're actually fine, but um, if you want to get employed, and you get paid as a department head, you get paid like 350 bucks a day, uh, you know, on a fairly lower end uh, production. But for those, you're gonna to wanna to get the certificate from one of the, the outfits that are actually recognized by the unions. Thanks, Charlie. But it's all online. Um, since we do have Avery here, um, Avery, if you mind, wouldn't mind unmuting yourself and telling students here what your experience has been like in COVID and being a TWP student? Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to say really quickly, like. You guys really have the most wonderful professors right now talking to you. Um, I was just, I'm graduating this December. Uh, thanks to Steve's help, he's my advisor. You know, uh, he has answered every question I've ever emailed to him. But um, I was talking to my parents last night and we were just saying, I feel so, so equipped and ready to like start my career in the real world. I would just say, Dodge in this industry in general, it's really what you make of it. So if you're a hard worker, people are gonna notice and they're gonna be excited about you. And nobody is gonna roll their eyes if you have a question. Like, I know I came to college with a lot of like fears and different things, but really it's what you make of it. I think this major is so incredible because I don't know, I think the fact that you get to really dabble in a bunch of different things and hone in on what specifically you love to do allows you to really have this mutual respect for everybody that you're around. And I think that quality um, allows you to really make a difference once you get into the industry. I also would say like, the best part of Dodge is it's so deeply collaborative. I know myself, like, th this is funny, okay? <laughs> this is funny. It might not be funny, but this is funny to me. My, um, my roommates the past two years were all TWP majors. We met orientation, and I have become, I've, I love writing. My pilot's being produced right now. I'm, I'm so thrilled and excited about it, and Charlie and Bill have been the most wonderful professors. But get this, my other two roommates, both TWP, one loves directing, she's directing the pilot. One loves producing, she's producing the pilot. And the three of us were making a short film this December. So all of this to say, not only are you learning so, so much and you're gonna leave having a sense of confidence about yourself, but you're also gonna be meeting peers that excite you. Like I know not only am I leaving with, you know, different networking people like my professors who I'm gonna hammer to try and find a job from, but I also have all of my friends who I'm like, you know what, I want you on my list and I wanna make things with you. So yeah, I would say just trust your gut with everything and feel free. I know um, Jessica dropped down a link to Unibuddy, which is kind of like a casual Facebook messenger um, thing where you can email, um, message anybody in the majors. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions for you guys. But really, I think this is a very special major and all of your professors, like they mentioned earlier, they care deeply about you. Like, I feel like, I mean, honestly, let's be real. I've definitely cried in front of half of these professors. But you know, <laughs> I think that just goes to show you like you're this is definitely a very special place to be so that's what i'll say hey jessica yes uh, can i jump in um someone asked the question does this uh jordan does the skills you learn in this major translate well into film as opposed to television uh the answer is uh yes all caps uh, <laughs> There's many, uh, uh, I think there's a lot of film people who actually wish they were doing television projects. 
Uh, Professor Gardner, give us the stats of how many shows are shooting this week, how many films are shooting this week. Well, you know, the stats are skewed now because of, uh, because of COVID. But if you look back one year, uh, about 400 movies get uh, distribution uh, in a year. And last year, uh, there are at least 400 television shows shooting every day. So television versus film, the employment opportunities are much greater in television. And, and, and just in terms of technical skills, uh, Breaking Bad is a TV show. West Wing was a TV show. Uh, you know, but they're shot the same way Mort shot his feature films back in the day. Also in terms of writing, you know, the, the difference between writing for TV and writing for film is nothing. It's exactly the same. You know, you're telling stories, you're setting up characters, you're putting them on a journey and you're complicating that journey. And in television, you're formatting it over eight, six, 10 episodes, sometimes for a year or two. And a movie has a closed end format at the end of an hour and a half or two hours. But those are subtle technical differences. And when you're trained at TWP, you're trained in the craft of making a story. And that story can easily go from TV to film, if you decide, you know, you want to work in a longer medium, you know, you can do extended miniseries and you're writing several feature films as part of a, a, a bigger piece. So it, it, the, the TV film distinction, as Steve, Steve said, it doesn't really exist anymore, other than the fact that in the specific world of television, they're making a lot of stuff. And, and Jordan, it's a good question. Uh, but nothing to worry about. Awesome, so it looks like that's all the questions in the chat. Uh, Patty and Avery answered all the other ones. Um, does anyone, before we close out, does anyone have any last minute questions that they wanna put in the chat? We are available on, on the Dodge website. You can find our email addresses um, and feel free to write us if you have questions and we will get back to you just put you know prospective student in the subject line and we'll get yes. back to you and we're also okay. going to put um our virtual tour link to register for a dodge uh, virtual tour as well as our unibuddy link again in case you want to engage further with avery like she mentioned before patty any of our other current students um and then chapman or excuse me our office our admissions office was also in an episode of chapman's podcast um, and Patty talks about her experience as a student, other students do as well. So if you'd like to listen to that, put that in the chat as well. Does anyone else have anything to add before we close? I'd just uh, like to say thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Avery. And my yeah. thanks to the team. It's a winning team. Yes. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you. All. Thanks, thanks, everyone. Respect. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks, Jessica. Thank, thank you, Jessica.